authority. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name, O God. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be. Hallowed be your name. Your name. Lord of majesty, divine authority, hallowed be your name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your loving kindness. Thank you for your presence in our midst. We worship you. We adore you. We exalt you. We say you are high and lifted up. There is none like you, O Lord. Thou art glorious in holiness and fearful in praises. Always, always, always doing wonders. Hallelujah. We lift up holy hands before you today, Lord. And we say, have your way, Father God. Be magnified today, Lord. Be glorified today, Lord. Let no flesh flow in your presence. Let your spirit live and move and have its being through us today. And we say your will be done in this place, your kingdom come. We cover this whole atmosphere, this whole church, the people who you want to be here. Cover them with the blood of Jesus and fill the whole earth with your glory. Your will be done, your kingdom come. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God the praise for another privilege, another opportunity to stand in the presence of the people of God and share the word of life. And for the last couple of months, we've been sharing about strengthen my soul. Somebody say strengthen my soul. How can I be strong as a believer? How can I, in this shifting sands of the culture, in this shifting sands of the times we're in, how can I stand without losing my, 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 my strength in this generation. And the Bible says here that there was a man called Peter. And this man called Peter, at a point, Jesus asked him, how come, Peter, you have no faith? That was in Matthew 14. There was a man called Peter. And at a point, he betrayed Jesus, abandoned the ministry. And Jesus told him in Luke 22, verse 31, he says, Peter, Simon, Simon. The devil has desire to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. Somebody say, Jesus is praying for me. Why do I say that? Because Hebrews 7, 25, the Bible says that we have an intercessor, whoever liveth to make intercession for us. Just like Jesus prayed for him in the Old Testament, in the New Testament for Peter, Jesus is praying for us today. Amen. Let me read, there's a scripture I read a few weeks ago. I want to just bring it up here. In Proverbs 31, talking about the virtuous woman, we're talking about strength in my soul. But look at what it says about the virtuous woman. Because a lot of times people think of strength as, you know, six packs, you know, biceps, you know, muscles. Look at what it says about the Proverbs 21 woman. It says in verse 17 of Proverbs 31, she girds herself with strength. And makes her arms strong and firm. You see, the word there, strength, means spiritual, mental, and physical fitness for her God-given task. But this is what it takes to be a person of virtue in the last days. When we say strengthen my soul, we're talking of your will, your mind, your emotion. The things that change with the, with the, with the vicissitudes of life. You know, people's opinions, people's experiences, they want to shift things. But we know that... God is the God who he does not change, amen? He said, I, because I, I am the Lord that changeth not, therefore you sons and daughters of Jacob are not consumed. So we're talking about how can I be like God? How can I be unshakable, immovable in the midst of the, of the storms of life? The favorite scripture I've quoted so far this couple of months has been the, in the book of Matthew, I believe chapter 6 or 7. 
The Bible talks about the, the man who built his house on the rock. I believe it's in Matthew. It goes all the way down to verse 37. All the way down to the last verse. Yes. In verse Matthew chapter 7. The Bible was talking about a man who built his house on the rock. Matthew 7. So when I talk about strengthening my soul, this is the picture I'm talking about, Brother Orlando. This is the picture I'm talking about. And I want us to just read a few verses here. It says that in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 24, he says, Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them will be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and yet the house did not fall because it was founded on the rock. Someone say, I'm founded on the rock. So this same Peter, Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. The prayer of Jesus turned Peter from a weakling to a strong man. And the Bible says here that the secrets of strength are people who hear the word, and they do the word. Someone say, hear the word and do the word. But what I want to bring out here, Mother, Mother Emma, is that the Bible says that and when the storms came, it's not if the storms came, amen. When the storms came, I'll give you an example. I shared on the last time I was preaching that somebody reported me to the Mississippi State Board for no good reason. Just yesterday, they sent me an email. The case has been dismissed and there was nothing found. It was all false and it was just a somebody's capricious emotional outburst but this is where i'm going with this somebody else would have been walking in fear somebody else would have been walking in 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 in, in anxiety not sleeping worry you get my point but when your soul is strong when your emotion is strong when you know in whom you have believed i don't take joy in dismissing I don't take joy in, I'm not going to throw it in the face of the person who reported me because I know who it is. I'm not even going to mention it because I'm emotionally stable, amen. It's only an emotionally unstable somebody that will call and say, yes, you did this, but look at what happened. And I, I'm, I'm crucified. That doesn't, I, don't, I, don't, I, I look at him as a soul that can be won through, the, the, through my love and through my benevolence and through my, you know, showing him some, gra some, some grace. Does somebody get what I'm talking about? So the Bible says here that if you want to be strong, you've got to be a hearer. Someone say hearer and doer. And the Bible says that the storms will come. It doesn't matter financial storms, spiritual storms, emotional storms, family storm, uh, church storms, spiritual storms. It says the storms will come. The question is not will the storms come. The question is will I stand when the storms come? And if I am going to stand, how can I be strong? Because the storms will definitely come. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? The Bible says if you want to be like that person who stood strong in Matthew chapter 7 when the storms came, the Bible says he was a hearer and a doer. But then the Bible now talks about another person in verse 27. The Bible says, and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and they beat against the house. Verse 27. And the house fell, and great and complete was the fall of that house. Who was this man whose house fell when the storms came? Sister Michelle. The Bible says in verse 26 that this man was a man who heard the word and does not do them. And he's like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. So the reason why we're sharing this today is because as we are alive on the earth, troubles will certainly come. Am I talking to somebody? People will report you for what you didn't do. People will call the cops for what you didn't say. People will, you know, try to nitpick your, your statements to make it look like you have a, 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 a certain bias, which you don't have a bias. But the question is not, will that happen? It will happen. But are you going to be strong in your soul when they happen? Because Peter... The word agitate, the Bible says, Peter, Jesus, Jesus told him that the devil has, that the devil has got to sift through. The word sift means agitate to the point of overthrow. So the devil was pulling and pushing, pulling and turning Peter. But Peter stood strong because Jesus had prayed for him. And that's why upon that rock, Jesus built the church. 
He became the leader of the church. He became the leader of the New Testament church. He preached on the day of Pentecost and 5,000, 3,000 people gave their lives to Jesus Christ. I'm trying to tell somebody you can be sifted, but you will still be lifted. Am I talking to somebody? You can be weak, but don't stop there. You can become strong if you stay in faith. Someone say stay in faith. Peter today is regarded as on the, on, you know, when the, when the 12 foundations of Jerusalem in the New Testament in Jerusalem, one of those gates has his name at the foundation. Why? Because he didn't quit. He had the same ability to quit like Judas. They both betrayed Jesus. Judas lied, betrayed Jesus, got money, went and hung himself. But Peter, the Bible says that he told the people in Acts chapter 3 of chapter 4, he says, and you betrayed the Holy One of Israel. He said, you guys said I lied, I betrayed, I, I, I denied Jesus. But he says, if you, if you look at Acts chapter 3, he was talking, he was speaking to the congregation in Israel. He says that, but you denied the Holy One of Israel. What does that mean? He had forgiven himself. Someone say, he had forgiven himself. That's what I'm trying to get to here. The reason why Peter became who he became was that he moved on from his weakness and he became strong. So we're talking about the different things that can strengthen your soul, the wine of the spirit, the war in the realm of the spirit, the wells of praise, wealth of God, the word of God, willingness. For the last few months, we're talking about wisdom. Someone say wisdom. Wisdom can catapult you from weakness to strength. But I said, for you to have wisdom, you must be, you must first of all, make sure that wisdom is divine. Someone say divine. Don't look for earthly wisdom, look for heavenly wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 9, the Bible says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of the Lord that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Number two, wisdom must be desired. Someone say desire. Bible says, Proverbs chapter 18 verse 1 to 2, Bible says, who, who desire a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. You don't get wisdom except you desire it. Number three, wisdom must be deep. Someone say deep. So wisdom is, 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 a, is a deep realm. It's not a, it's not a passive, it's not a superficial realm. Let me read Proverbs chapter 8. There are very few scriptures that talk about wisdom and the importance of wisdom in strengthening your soul like Proverbs chapter 8 does. I'm going to read Proverbs chapter 8 in verse 32. So Proverbs chapter 8, if you look at it closely, from verse 30, and I'm reading from... I got this from um, the Amplified Bible, so it's a few extra words. Proverbs chapter 8 from verse 30. The Bible says, I wisdom, then I wisdom was beside him as a master and director of the work. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always. D, can you give me your, your Bible? I want to use the King James, if you don't mind, just to give me a better clarity of this. Scripture. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 30. I'll read verse 30. Thank you. So Proverbs 8, talking about wisdom, talking about wisdom. from verse 20. Um, in the King James. Oh, this is New King James. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is talking about wisdom here. And how God made the earth. It says... In the New King James, hmm. I'll read from verse 32. This is talking about wisdom. It says, now therefore listen to me, my children. Blessed are those who keep my ways. It says, verse 33, hear instruction and be wise. Do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gate. Someone say watching daily. He says, waiting at the posts of my door. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But whoever 
sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. There's, let me put it this way. If, if, you choo- if you reject direction from heaven, which is the fourth key for wisdom, you have chosen the paths of death. The Bible says, he who, all those who hate me love death. But the man who listens and watches and waits for me, the Bible says, they will find life. Someone say, I'll find life. And I'll find favor. But you've got to be willing to take direction from the Holy Spirit. So the last few months, we've been sharing about direction as a pivot for wisdom. And we started reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And I'm going to read that scripture in verse 15. That was kind of our theme scripture for this. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10. The Bible says here in verse 10 of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. This is the new King James. Says that, but wisdom brings success. If you read it in King James, it says that, but wisdom is profitable to direct. So I say wisdom is profitable to direct. The Bible says here, Brother Orlando, if you have an axe that is not sharp, that doesn't give you the edge, the cutting edge you want, he says you can add more strength. But he says that be careful because you may add strength in the wrong direction and it will not benefit that sharpness that you're trying to achieve. In all your strength, make sure you follow wisdom. What's a wisdom? And last week I shared with you an African proverb and I said, a knife cannot sharpen its own handle. That means if I have a knife now, Sister Michelle, no matter how sharp that knife is, that knife cannot sharpen the handle upon which that blade is on. What that means is that part of the strategy for you to get sharper in life is who you hang around. So the Bible says here, if the axe is dull, put more strength. He says, but be careful because wisdom is profitable to direct. He's saying here that, do you know that the people you hang around with can sharpen your life? Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? And the Bible corroborates this analogy, which I shared last week in Proverbs 27, verse 17, which is kind of where I'm going to be emphasizing today, missionary Preston. Proverbs 27, verse 17. The Bible now says this in a different way. It says, iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Whoso keepeth the fig tree. Proverbs 27 verse 17 to 19. Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. So he that waited on his master shall be honored. As in water face answers the face, so the heart of man to man. Father, your word is anointed as we share it. Bless it, heal, save, deliver in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the meat of where we're going today. The Bible says in Proverbs 27 verse 17, it says that the secret to your sharpening is who is around you. It says iron sharpened iron. So say iron sharpened iron. Show me your friends. I'll show you why you're dull. I'll show you why you're not sharp. I'll show you why you're not making a cutting edge around you. But the Bible now goes further to define the people who can sharpen your life, Brother Henry. It says iron will sharpen iron. He says so will the counsel of a friend sharpen a friend. But he now defines those friends. And he says if a man keeps the fig tree, The man will eat the fruit of the fig tree. That means you can't disconnect a man who is around another man from getting the blessing that man is getting. Okay, if I'm keeping a fig tree, if I'm I'm helping Pastor Preston move forward, if Pastor Preston is moving forward, my life can't stay static. Am I talking to somebody? If missionary Preston is moving forward and I'm helping keep the fig tree, keep the blessing, make her prosperous, make her fruitful. There's no way I can be stagnant if I'm making her go forward. It's like a pipe or it's like a hose. 
It holds it carry water, but it will never remain dry. Am I talking to somebody? It will not carry, it will not, it, will, it is not the water that waters the ground, but that host will never be dry as long as it allows water flow through it. That's the same way about this. But listen to me. The last part is what I'm emphasizing today. The Bible says, so he that waited on his master shall be honored. Someone say honored. Let's go back to the beginning. Wisdom will put you in the position of people who will sharpen your life. And because they are sharpening your life, the wisdom they give you will give you quality strength so that you can be sharper in every aspect of your life. But the Bible now says, don't just hang out with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Hang out with people who are sharpening you. And then the Bible gives us three definitions of people who sharpen others. He says, people who keep the fig. So they keep the fig tree. That means they're not stealing the fig. They are keeping it. They are meant. Have you, have you been around people who just want to use and abuse? They don't care about you. They just want to get, grab, go. Am I talking to somebody? The Bible says those are not the kind of people that, that will sharpen your life. He says, who so, he says, I'm telling you who will sharpen you. I'm telling you who you, who you need to hang around. He says, beware of people who don't keep the fig tree. All they want to do is take the fig and eat the fig and suck the fig and throw away the fig. But the Bible says, whoso keeps the fig tree will eat the fruit thereof. Check yourself. Are you always on the giving, giving? You, 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 you give. This person you hang around has never for one day said, can I be a blessing to you? Can I encourage you? Can I be, can I, I mean, it, it, what I'm trying to say here is this. Beware of people you hang around because they determine the wisdom that you manifest. Because the Bible says here that wisdom is profitable to direct if you want your iron to be sharper. But the secret to a sharpness is the environment that you are in. And the secret to the environment is are you around people who keep the fig tree? Because they keep the fig tree. There are people who don't care about your spiritual vitality. They don't care about your financial vitality. Have you met people who just want to get everything they can get, but they don't care how the source is maintained? Oh, just give me this. They don't know if your job is stable, if your investments are stable. The Bible says that there are people who carry that mentality. They don't sharpen you. Then the second thing God said was this. He that waited on his master shall be honored. Someone say honored. The reason why this caught my attention, Sister Rita, is that the word used there for honor is the Hebrew word, or is the, is the Hebrew word that means kabad, which can be interpreted very strong. Someone say very strong. The Bible says here, he that waited on his master shall be honored or shall become very strong. This is what I'm asking today. Could it be that the reason why your soul is not strengthened is because you are not a man who is waiting on your master? I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Could this be the reason why your wisdom is low? Is because you rather than stay in the midst of people of high achievement, you want to be the one-eyed king in the land of the blind. Could it be the reason why your, 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 your direction is, is, is absolutely appalling and you can't hear from God? It's because you'd rather hang out with people who, who want to sing your praises and tell you how great you are. But you don't hang out with people who can motivate and inspire you to the next level. Am I talking to somebody? The Bible says, he that waited on his master shall be strong, shall be honored, shall be kabad shall be weighty. I'm here to tell somebody, we live in a generation that does not believe in the master-servant relationship. But the Bible says here, as the hands, as the eyes of a servant look to the hands of their master, so my eyes look unto you. When God was describing a relationship between him and the children of Israel, he said it's like a servant looking at the hands of the master. Don't forget, the servant is not looking at the eyes of the master. It's only in America you guys look at people eyeball to eyeball. In Nigeria, if you look somebody eyeball to eyeball, they will think you're, you've, you've lost your, 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 your sanity. A, a woman who works for somebody, you don't look at your boss eyeball to eyeball. You don't. 
it's a sign of deference when you when you're looking at the hand, not at the eyes. But listen to this. The Bible says, as the eyes of a servant look to the hands of the master, so my eyes look unto you, O God. Looking unto the hands of the master. And God said here that there's a problem in the 21st century American church where nobody wants to be a servant, everybody wants to be a master. The Bible says that if you will wait, somebody say wait. The only place you start from the top in life is the grave. You start digging from the grave to the top. If you will wait on your master, God says you will become honored. You will become honored. He said these are the kind of people who would make your life sharp. Look for people who have become, who are master apprentices. Run away from people who are masters without any apprenticeship. Am I talking to somebody? Who did you serve? Where were you going to church before? Have you done this in any place? You see a doctor shows up, opens a shop, and you went to his office. He didn't go to, he didn't serve under any training. He didn't train as a resident. He didn't go through internship. He just opened his clinic. He hasn't been tutored or mentored. What's going to happen to that doctor? He's going to butcher some people. Why? Because he never waited on his master. In the medical field, it's hierarchy. You just come in as a first-year resident. You're at the bottom of the pile. You do all what we call the scud work. You, you clean the patient's backside. You, you, you do the work that nobody wants to do. But by your second year, you learn how to crack open the chest and sew the heart up together. By the third year, you're doing brain surgery and other things. But you, you, you've got to be ready to wait. Someone say wait. You don't just take the, 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 the scalpel from the, from the head surgeon and start operating. Immediately you get in there. Because you don't have the experience. You haven't shown the, the grit and the humility and the, and, the, and the tenacity. They have to see how you're operating. It's only in the church everybody wants to get the mic the first time they come to church. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? They say, why can't I sing? After all, I'm a better singer than Kamra. I'm a better singer than India. And God said, the secret to you being honored is your waiting on the master. Someone say, wait on the master. I don't know who the master is in your life. It could be your parents. Have you seen those kids? They want to leave the home at 18 because they feel they've gone to high school. They've graduated. They know it all. And after a few years, they, they come back with their tail between their legs. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I could make it by myself. What happened? They did not wait. They thought the $5.17 from McDonald's could take care of them. They didn't know there's more to life than seven cents and seven dollars an hour. Am I talking to somebody? There was a man of God in, in, in South Africa. His name was Ungungu. And this man of God was well known for his miracles and healings. Highly respected for his ability to perform signs and wonders. And this man from Germany, Carl Wilhelm Bunke, was 27, maybe 21, 22, when he moved to South Africa. And he was a greenhorn. He didn't speak the native language in South Africa. And people looked at him as a white guy. But he loved the black people. He was preaching in the, in the black areas. And he decided that, okay, let me team up with this Reverend Ungugu, who is a local of South Africa, who the people respect, and so that when I come out, I'll preach the gospel, and then this Reverend Ungugi will lay hands on the sick and see miracles, because he was, a he was an evangelist, he was a crusader. So after maybe three, four years of doing this with Reverend Ungugi, Reverend Bonke one day was at a crusade, they had 10,000 people or so ready, the power of God, everybody was expectant, Reverend Ungugi was there, and then Reverend Ungugi simply just walked out of the crusade. And Reverend, Reverend Bonke said, where is Reverend Ungugi? And one of um, Reverend Bonke's men told him that he heard him telling another pastor that Bonke is finished without me. What did I say? He said, Bonke is finished without me. This was about in the, in the late 60s, early 60s. You know, there was still apartheid. There was still, you know, segregation. And this black preacher felt 
this white guy appealing to black people. I'm the one bringing the crowd. I'm the one showing the miracles, the signs and wonders. And he's taking all the glory. He's the one that is all people know about, Reverend Bronke. He said, I'm going to go and start my own ministry. Do you know that? Fast forward 50 years later. Graham Bonke had seen 70 million souls saved in Africa. 70 million people had written their name as people who had given their life for Christ. My wife was in his crusade in Enugu. I was in his crusade in Aba. I saw a man who was blind. Everybody knew him in the town. Miraculously healed before my very eyes. Reverend Bonke saw a dead man who had been in the mortuary for four days. And his wife brought his corpse to the church where he preached. That man rose from the dead, and that man is alive today. Do you know that in the late 80s, when Re Reverend Bonke's crusade had exploded, when miracles were normal, commonplace in his crusade, the Reverend Nguzi came back to sponsor. He was, he was, he was, he was, he was disconsolate. He was weeping. And they said, why are you weeping? He said, if I had known, if I had known, I would never have left Graham Bonke. Because some people think if they leave you, you're finished. But somebody say, God with me. Somebody say, God with me. Is more than enough. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? The day Ungugi left, he was meant to preach. He was meant to pray. He left Bonke by himself. That was the first day Graham Bonke was able to pray for a person. And they saw blind eyes open. And they saw cripples walk. If that Ngugi had not left, Graham Bonke may not have gone to where he should have gone to. Catch this. Graham Bonke became sharper because that man left his life. There are people who need to leave your life. That man was a man who was not willing to wait master am i talking to somebody he was not willing to wait on the on the instruction from god and his departure made for a, re a revelation of who reverend reverend bonke's gifts were so what i'm trying to say is this there may be people who need to depart from your life for your light to shine is somebody getting what i'm talking about there may be people who need to depart from your life for your light to shine. Sometimes your light is covered because the, 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 the people around you are, are, are obstructing the glory from shining. Let me show you this scripture in Proverbs 13, verse 17, verse 13. Proverbs 17, verse 13. The Bible says, Whosoever rewarded evil for good, evil shall not depart from his heart. Let me read it again. Proverbs 17, verse 13. Whoso, someone say whoso. That means it could be anybody. It could be a child who the father and mother fed him for 20 years, kept him in a house, clothed him. The Bible says, whosoever rewarded thee with evil. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 13. Evil will never depart from their heart. Am I talking to somebody? person does not honor where he's coming from. The Bible says there's a perpetual curse upon that person's heart. Why am I saying that? Because many times, the reason why some people are never sharpened, Mother Emma, is because they began to bite the fingers of serpents. The reason why some people never see strength or direction or wisdom is simply because instead of being grateful for that stepmother who was mean but at least she fed you. Am I talking to somebody? I know that stepfather was a cursor and he threw things at you, but at least he, 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 he got you clothes and he kept you at, under a roof for a certain period of time. I know that boss you worked for was, was always insolent and didn't appreciate what you did, but at least they gave you a paycheck every two weeks. Am I talking to somebody? The Bible says, whosoever waited, Could it be that word honor means strong? Could it be the reason for lack of strength, lack of sharpness, lack of ideas, lack of inventiveness, lack of insight, lack of revelation is because there are too many masters 
in the church and if you sing. Everybody wants to sit on the pulpit. Everybody wants to hold the mic. Everybody wants to be the, the Lord. Nobody wants to be the servant. But Jesus said, blessed are those who will serve. He said that the greatest in the kingdom is made up of the servants. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? So God sent me with a word to somebody here. Be careful who hangs around you. Don't Make sure you don't hang around people who eat the fig tree. Somebody say, eat the fig tree. And he says, make sure you don't hang around people who don't wait on their master, who are ingrate. Somebody say, ingrate. You know what an ingrate is? Somebody helped you get into medical school. Your, you know, like your, your auntie worked two, three jobs, then you get into medical school by the Orlando and you become an oncologic surgeon, you become a neurosurgeon and that same auntie comes to your house to, to say hi and you're like, who let her in here? Does she know this house? We don't, we don't, we don't, we live in the suburbs, this kind of environment is not for people of her class because you've now moved up the neighborhood, you forgot where you started from. The Bible says evil will never depart from that person's house. That's what happened to Absalom. If you read the genealogy of Absalom, Absalom had no kids. Why? Because Absalom was an ingrate. Absalom's father loved him, did everything for him, even though he committed murder against, um, not Adonijah, the other boy, Sorry? Ab no, not Abner. He killed the older brother, his older brother. The one that raped his sister, that raped Amnon. Amnon, right. Even though he killed Amnon, his father still kept him around. But instead of appreciating the mercy of the kings, he decided to overthrow the king. You know what happened? Evil never departed. If you read the genealogy of Absalom, he never had another, he never had a son. His, his genealogy was terminated because of ingratitude. Am I talking to somebody? So hear me and hear me well. Beware of people who want to eat the fig tree. Beware of people who do not want to wait on the master. Then the third thing the Bible says in Apostles 27 verse 19, he says, as in water face answers to face, so the heart of man to man. The Bible says, Follow people whose your there's a heart connection. Somebody say there's a heart connection. I'm talking to people who want to strengthen their soul to their Orlando. I'm talking to people who want to see wisdom, who want to become people with acute direction, who want to see God. The Bible says, as a water face answers to face, so the heart of man to man. If I walk into a river, Sister Michelle, and I look in that mirror, what am I going to see? My face. The Bible says, as a water face answers to a water face, so that, so that the heart of man answers to the man. Don't go, and the Bible says this in the context of iron sharpened iron. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? Don't follow people who you don't have a heart connection. The Bible says, how can two go together except they be agreed? The reason why there's some people who are not sharp, the reason why there's some people who are not strengthened, we know the people who cannot get insight into the spiritual realm is because of who they hang around. And there are three kinds of people they hang around. The ones who want to eat their fig tree. The ones who want to not wait on their master. And then the ones who do not have a heart connection. You've got to beware of these three kinds of people. Is somebody getting what I'm talking about? There must be a heart connection. There must be a heart connection. When the disciples were looking for somebody to replace Judas... They said, we want somebody who has gone with us all through our journey, who knows us, who follows the same ideals that we follow. My father will be passed away now a year next week. But you see, my dad and I had the same heart connection. The reason why we were, we, the reason why I'm, I'm continuing where he stopped is because I understood his heart. We're organizing a one-year memorial for him in his honor, Samama Foundation Lecture Series. And I can, I can, you know, when I speak, I speak knowing what he would have excused if he was alive. So 
because we had a heart-to-heart connection. So if you want to be strengthened in life, don't, and I'm not saying don't hang out with people who, who criticize you. No, criticism can be helpful. But make sure you hang out with people who have the same passion, the same vision, the same direction you ha- you're going to. Am I talking to somebody? Just last week in Nigeria, a young girl, 21 years old, killed a man, 50 years old. This girl was a high school, she was a college student. This man was the owner of a TV broadcasting studio. His wife is well known. She's the manager of a big oil company. But he, 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 he took this 21-year-old girl and, you know, she had some immoral relationships. And according to the young girl, they had drugs and all that. And then after the man was a little drugged out, she stabbed him and took his wallet. But do you know that this girl was a third-year student in the university? And some people were like, why would a girl 21 who is in the university kill in cold blood the men? Do you realize it was when we went into her history, her name is Chidima, you can look it up in the YouTube or Facebook as she was confessing. Her name is Chidima, and she killed the man who is the owner of Super TV. She said, the, the, the sister came and said, Chidima left the house at the age of 11. Our father died, and our mother was having a hard time looking after her children. Chidima began to smoke and hang out with the wrong crowd. And then she walked out of the family and moved in with a man who began to use her for sex work. Now, she got into college. Maybe she's smart. I don't know. But the environment determines the element. Am I talking to somebody? Even though she was getting book smarts, her environment of nefarious activity, her environment of prostitution, Her environment of drugs molded her character. So don't tell me, oh, I went to college. That doesn't change anything. Don't tell me I know, I know, I know stuff. No, no, no. Don't tell me I'm a, I'm a good speaker. No, no, no. It's the environment. The Bible says evil communication will corrupt good manners. First Corinthians 13, I think, verse 22, or something like that. Evil. That means no matter how good you are. Sister India, no matter how brilliant you are, Sister Asia, no matter how temperate and well-mannered and cultured you are, evil communication will corrupt good manners. It's like a pig. No matter what you do to a pig, it will always come back to being a pig. So please, the lesson today from Proverbs 27, verse 15 to 17, is be careful who, you, who hangs around you. Don't hang around people who eat the fig tree. Somebody eat the fig tree. Have you heard that saying, don't kill the goose that lays the golden egg? There are people who, they don't care if you, are, if you die. They just want to get what they can. And you know the sad thing is that when you're dead, they'll just, they'll never show up. They might not even show up for the funeral. <laughs> so you saw it. They got what they wanted while you were there. Your carcass is in the grave. They are, they have, they've moved on to somebody else. Beware of people who eat the fig tree and spit out the seed. <laughs> so you saw it. Beware of people who don't wait on the master. If you see somebody who just wants to get to the top without waiting, without staying in line, without being subordinate, without humbling himself, without having... Any man or woman who has no superior mentor, master, is a dangerous individual. Because Jesus showed the example, 12 disciples, before he left. He said, this is how how leadership is. You have a circle, you mentor them, and then they go to the next level. Anybody who doesn't have anybody they, they defer to is a dangerous individual. Then number three, look for people who share the same heart pangs that you do. So I married my wife 18 years ago, and she's, she's, we've gone on at least eight, maybe seven, am I correct, Do maybe eight mission trips. Now, can you imagine if I married a woman who, she doesn't want her Louis Vuitton shoes in the mud because of the mission field, or she doesn't want her nails messed up 
because there's no petty tourists in Umeri, Nigeria, or she can't get her hair done because there's no electricity in the village and she's using river and tap or water from the stream. Am I talking to somebody? Can you imagine if I got married to that kind of woman who can't, who can't do without the, what they call it, the mascara, and she, she's got to put all that before she steps out. And where she's going, there's no way to get that stuff. There will be no mission trip. Am I talking to somebody? I've done seven or eight or nine. Every year, I'll be saying, honey, I want to go on a mission trip. She's like, do they have air conditioning? <laughs> do they have, do they have, do they have five-star hotels? And I'm like, I'm sorry, this is a rural village. I can't do my ministry. So don't join somebody who is not going in the same direction you're going. Amen. So the reason I can go on mission trips and not worry if she'll come along because she has the same heart for people and for souls that I do. So for those of you who are looking for a marital partner, look for somebody with the same heart as you. Let's stand up on our feet today. I believe God is giving somebody direction for their next level. Amen. Direction that brings wisdom, that brings strength. You have been too weak for too long. You have been too, too movable for too long. And God says the problem is you don't have the wisdom that you need. But the wisdom will come when you start following the right crowd, hanging out with the right people, saying the right things. This young, this, this, this thing that happened to me a few weeks ago, it was a, a person in my office that told me, write the letter this way. Put these words in the letter. Today, the case has been dismissed. What happened? I hung out with people of like mind. I could have hung out with somebody else who wanted to get rid of me and could have lied against me and told me to put the wrong thing. So I want you to be careful with who you talk to on a daily basis. There are people who are like Jesus. You have the inner talkers, the three. Then you have the outer circle, the 12. Then you have the open court, the, the 70. You've got to have the areas of influence in your life. There are people who shouldn't have inner access to your inner sanctuary. Am I talking to somebody? I want you to begin to talk to God and say, Lord, give me life lifters. In fact, somebody, I want you to pray this part. I want you to pray this prayer. If you know that's a prayer you have, you say, God, give me a life partner with the same vision that I have. This is a prayer for somebody here. Because God is going to send that person. Give me a life partner with the same vision that I have for my life. Because God says he wants to, how can two go except they, they be agreed? God says, so you're going to say, Lord, give me a life partner. And God is going to answer this prayer within three to six months. I believe that. Before the end of the year, you're going to see a turnaround. You're going to see somebody from nowhere and he's going to have or she's going to have the same vision for life and ministry that you have. Three or six months, I'm believing God with you. Say, Lord, give me a life. Maybe you have a partner now, and you're saying, Lord, change him. Turn his heart. Let us have the same unified vision. Turn to God and say, Lord, give me a life partner who shares the same vision and dreams that I do. Open your mouth and talk to God right now. It's not too late. God can turn that woman's heart. God can turn that man's heart. He can turn what looked like as if it was impossible to turn. He can give you your marriage a new beginning, a fresh start. He can give you a partner after your dreams. He can send a destiny helper, a life lifter to make a difference in your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I have a and I'm not going to mention any names, but I just want to make sure that we understand this, okay? As an 18, 19-year-old student in high school, I went to stay with my uncle. And this is a sad story, but I was in my uncle's house for two, three weeks, and the guy had parties every weekend. To the point that he was, you know, related to me in one way or the other. To the point that while I was sleeping on the bed, Another of my uncles was doing things with a woman right next to where I was sleeping. Like as if I wasn't there. I was maybe 18 or 19. When I told my dad, he pulled me out of that environment. Okay? 
but this is where I'm going. He took me because I was doing some courses. So he sent me to another auntie's house where there were much more, you know, sane environment. But this is where I'm going with this. That uncle who was doing what he was doing next to me, two of his kids had their mouths full. The other man who I was in his house, and in those two weeks, parties every weekend, his marriage had collapsed. Okay? The other person I moved to their house to stay with, they've been married for almost 40, 50 years. Never had a problem. This is what I'm trying to say here. Could it, it's not a coincidence that when you surround yourself with riot cross religion, your own children, your own environment becomes riot cross. If I had hung out with that man on a long-term basis, you can never imagine what could have dumped on me as an 18-year-old boy witnessing all those immoral activities. So what am I trying to say here? Be careful who you hang around. Be careful who you see, who you stand. Psalm 1 verse 1 says, Blessed is the man who does not stand in the way of the wicked, who does not sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the, is in the, is in the, wo- the law of the Lord, and upon it he meditates day and night. So it's a blessing to hang out with the people of God. I just thought about it today. Two of his daughters married now, not one. The other one married, not one. So what am I trying to say here? Watch your environment, and God will watch your life. Amen. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are holier eyes than to behold iniquity. Many times you enter a place where God cannot keep a watch over you because it's a place that doesn't glorify God. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Father God, I share the gospel you told me to share with your people. Lord, today, oh God, I prophesy to them, they shall walk in accuracy, they shall walk in victory, they shall walk in supernatural strength. Their environment will become a positive environment for the glory of God and the presence of God to be made manifest. When they step in, the devils will step out. I decree, O God, their life will be a point of reference for others coming before and after them of a man or woman who walk in divine victory all the days of their lives. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare all that concerns them shall be perfected, shall be perfected, shall be perfected, shall be perfected. As we step in tomorrow into the second half of the year, Lord, we decree acceleration. We decree direction. We decree desires that have been standing still for the last six months granted in this last part of the year. Because your word says that the end of a matter is better than the beginning. Lord, this is the last day of June. We thank you for bringing us to this last day of June. As we step into July, we step into July with you, Lord. Go with us. Glorify your name. And make your name great in our lives. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah.